Good morning, everybody. Welcome to August. Uh, it is Monday, and I'm going to give you a little feedback on a couple of things, and then we're going to hit the um, chapter and seven, chapter six and seven quick hits uh, today. So, uh, when you're looking for videos, there will be three today. This one and two others. Uh, so, uh, first thing that I want to talk about is your exam. Everybody did pretty good. Uh, it was a uh, good average, uh, average score, um, everyone passed. Uh, just hints for the next exam, uh, pay close attention to uh, concepts and definitions of those concepts and then how you would apply those. Also, um, pay close attention to if I, if I talk about something in the quick hits, if I point to something in the quick hits, um, then uh, Read more in detail about that um, as you're preparing for the exam. Next exam will be chapter six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, I believe. So those five chapters. So make sure that you're um, keeping up with your reading, obviously, and make sure that you're doing uh, your due diligence in studying for uh, in studying for the exam. Uh, but overall, I'm pleased with uh, with what you did. Uh, second thing that I want to talk about is APA assignment one. Overall, it was very good, uh, very good first attempt at uh, APA styling. Uh, I want to go through just a few um, points that uh, the majority of people kind of missed or struggled with. Um, overall, y'all did really well though. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, I will. Uh, go through these points and then I will uh, explain APA assignment two, which you can uh, read uh, about it. It's posted uh, online as well in the assignments folder. And then um, that's due tomorrow. So you'll, you'll need to be uh, working tonight to get that done and turn that in sometime tomorrow uh, or, or you can work on it tomorrow morning as well. So uh, let's talk about uh, APA assignment one first. Um, a few things that uh, some people kind of missed out on. Again, these are all minor things. However, when you're writing and you um, make one minor mistake, that's okay. But then if you start adding minor mistakes up, then all of a sudden it becomes a major mistake. So we want to make sure that we are um, paying extra attention to detail. Detail matters in APA writing. Okay, so first, right off the bat, font. Uh, there are a couple of acceptable fonts, but the easiest one is Times New Roman size 12. Just put that in your head. That's what the font you're going to use. Go into your Word document um, or your processor, whatever you have, and just change the font to Times New Roman uh, size 12. You can do that with uh, your default settings, um, but if you don't want to change the default, just make sure you change it before you type up any document. Um, Times New Roman size 12, that's the, the best font to use. Um, all right, a couple other things. Uh, some of you in your in-text citation, you only listed it as Ellison et al. Um, so a couple of a couple of rules when we're using et al. The first rule is that the very first time you cite some uh, author uh, or group of authors, you need to include all of their last names. So um, uh, in this case, it would be uh, Ellison, Music, and Henderson, 2008. So you, you include all of their last names the first time you cite that. Then every subsequent citation after that, you can use at all. Um, but make sure that very first time you use all the author's name. Now, the only exception to that rule is if it is an article that you are citing that has six or more authors. If there are six or more authors, then you may use at all from the very beginning. But with this one uh, right here, um, at all um, shouldn't be used until uh, you've cited uh, the three authors in, in that first internal citation. Okay, so that's pretty easy, pretty easy fix there. Uh, another thing with internal citations, 
remember that if you're using it in the flow of a sentence, so Ellicent Music and Henderson 2008 discuss racism in religious uh, attendance, um, dot, 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 whatever your sentence is, you will put the date in parentheses, okay? So if it's the flow of a sentence, the authors are outside of the parentheses, the date is inside of the parentheses. So Ellison, Music, Henderson, parentheses, 2008, discuss racism, dot, dot, dot. Hopefully that makes sense. If you are using the citation after a sentence, so racism and religious attendance are discussed uh, in this research article or in this research study, Ellison Music Henderson 2008, then all of that is inside parentheses, right? So in the flow of the sentence, authors outside date inside parentheses, after the sentence, everything inside the parentheses. Hopefully that makes sense. The vast majority of you did really well with that. Um, just a couple of things to, to just remember as you're, you're citing. Um, you did really good. Nobody, nobody cited the title and uh, the journal and all of that stuff. Just kept it to author and date. That's perfect. That's what you want to do here. Uh, when you are doing internal citations, do not include page numbers unless you are using a direct quote. APA style, you don't include page numbers. It's going to be different than other styles that you've used in the past. Um, you only cite the page number if you are directly quoting from the source. Which brings up another good point about APA writing and something I will hammer you on in classes moving forward. Limit your direct quotes. A good APA style paper is going to have you using the ability to summarize what you have read and cite the authors for their thoughts. Not just citing directly what they say, you're citing your summarization of what they say because it's their thought. You don't have to cite your own original thoughts. You have to cite any thought that's not yours, okay? So summarize and cite. I want you to practice that over and over and over again. Summarize and cite, summarize and cite. In fact, that's part of what you did with, your, with the, the paragraph that you wrote. You summarized what the findings were in this study, and then you cited the authors of that study, right? You didn't just give me their results section and, and write it all out word for word, which is a good thing. Um, here's why we do this. If I, as a reader, am interested in what you are writing, then I wanna hear how you are processing that, how you are using that previous study, what those results mean to your research, summarize and cite. If I want to know word for word what is being said in that study, I'll just go read that study, right? I don't need to read their study inside of your study. I want to read the summarization. Okay, so uh, no page numbers unless you use a direct quote. Limit your direct quotes, summarize and cite. Everybody did a, a, a pretty good job with that as well. Uh, next, APA style. This will be hard for a lot of us, especially if you are like me and you have an opinion about everything. Avoid first person speaking in APA. Uh, the readers, quite honestly, don't care how you feel or think about whatever the studies are. Um, in APA writing, we are concerned with uh, third person. What does it say? What did he or she say, uh, find, study, do that is impacting? the current research at hand, okay? So avoid eyes and me's, um, no first person writing in APA styling. Now, putting a caveat on this, the caveat is unless otherwise instructed, all right? And here's why I'm saying that, because there will be some assignments in some classes where I'm going to say to you, or maybe another professor will say to you, we want this in APA style, but we also want a section where you give us your reflection of something. 
If we say that, then during that section, it's okay to use first person writing, right? Um, the norm, generally speaking, avoid first person in APA unless you are instructed to include it. Uh, okay, final thing on this assignment that needs to, to be looked at is on your reference page when you're doing the, the reference at the end, uh, the, the references at the end of, of your papers. Um, on that page, a couple of rules. When you are giving the article title, you only capitalize the first word, the first word after a colon, and proper nouns. First word, first word after a colon, and proper nouns. So, on this article, Bomb and Gilead, you should have capitalized the word bomb and the word Gilead. Bomb because it's the first word, Gilead because it's a proper noun. Racism because the first word after a colon, and African American because uh, it is considered a proper uh, proper noun there. Every other word in religious involvement and psychological distress among adults, none of those words should be capitalized. Okay, that's just the article title. The journal title are your more standard capitalization rules that you've probably grown up with. Every word is capitalized except for the articles. So uh, in this case, journal, uh, scientific, study, religion, all capitalized for the of, not capitalized, right? And uh, the journal title is in italics. Okay, so uh, again, just to, to recap that, on the reference page, capitalization rules, only on first words, first words after colons, and proper nouns do you capitalize, okay? Journal uh, titles, back to the more normal capitalization rules that you have used um, in other forms of writing. Uh, also, be sure to call up the APA manual or go to the OWL website or even Plunk's page and look at the examples. Uh, the APA separator is period. So after authors and date, there's the period. After article title, journal title, at the end, there's period. Period is the step, not a comma. So make sure you know where those periods go uh, in um, in your reference. And then finally, and, and most of you did this, find the DOI number. Make sure that you are finding the DOI number. Uh, it's the digital object identifier. Uh, every resource that you have will have a DOI number now. You way sometimes stuff did. Here is a, uh, a great uh, uh, reference for you to use um, to help you with that. Uh, this is a website called Crossword, uh, and it's uh, available for free DOI look, uh, free DOI lookup. So crossword.org and go to the DOI look. You're going to be able to type in uh, all of the relevant information here on um, any given article that you have. So uh, I've typed in Ellison as the first author, the journal title, Journal of Scientific Study of Re Religion, the article title I just typed in Bomb and Gilead, just those first few words, volume 47, issue two. If you hit search, it's going to run the search. You and when you scroll down, you're going to see uh, you're going to see the article Bomb and Gilead Racism, Religious Involvement, Stress Among African American Adults. And right there, you're going to see its DOI. Uh, after, um, after the uh, after the reference, then um, you will uh, include that DOI number at the end. Make sure you include everything uh, the, with the uh, slashes and the periods and the dashes and all of that. Um, but great little handy resource for you there. So, crossref 
www.ncpsf.org. I will also post a link to that um, in the handouts folder so that you can uh, quickly uh, go find that as well. Okay, again, overall, great job on APA 1. That was one of the best APA 1s um, that I've had from a group. Uh, you weren't all over the place with everything. It looked like you guys paid close attention to detail uh, for the most part, so I'm very proud of you uh, for that. Good job with that. Uh, okay, APA assignment part two is posted on Blackboard in the assignments folder. I want you to go find that. I want you to uh, work through that tonight, tomorrow, turn this in tomorrow. A little longer, um, but I want you to, uh, uh, I want you to, uh, give it your best shot. Uh, here's what it says, using the electronic database on the OCB library website, which we covered last week. You should know how to go find the articles now. Uh, if you need to, go look at that video again and, and figure out where exactly to go to find the articles. I want you to locate and read the article by Richard J. Petz, published in the Journal of Marriage and Family, entitled Single Mothers, Religious Participation, and Early Childhood Behavior. So you've got some information there that's important for when you're doing your search. Remember, you may need to turn on all of the databases or many of the databases so that you can find it uh, if it's not in the, the regular database that we search. So go through and remember how to do all of that. What you're going to do is provide an APA style reference page for the article. So you're not just doing a reference. You're going to create a reference page um, where you'll, you will uh, – include a couple of references this time. You're going to provide an APA style title page, so you're going to have to go either to the Plunks page or to the OWL website uh, or to your APA manual and figure out how to include a title page. What should a title page look like? Uh, then you need to summarize the literature review in the PETS article. Summarize the literature review. Now this is different than what you summarized for the last article. The last article, you summarize their findings. The literature review is always going to be the first part of uh, a research study. That's going to be the part where the authors are looking at literature, reviewing literature uh, from other authors that lead them into their own hypothesis for their study. So that first part uh, of, a, of a research article is going to be the lit review. You're going to summarize that. Who is Pets citing? What are Pets' main points uh, that he wants to discuss uh, as shown in that literature review? Good way to, to, to know you've read the literature review is when you get to the section that's titled Methods, uh, or, or something similar to methods, you've you've already read the lit review. Then you're getting into the how they did the, the current study. Okay, so lit review is reviewing the literature that leads them to asking the specific questions for this study. Fourth thing you're going to do for this is answer this question. So after you've summarized the lit review, you're going to answer the question: How did the study by Ellison et al. Ellison, Musick, and Henderson 2008 that you previously read contribute to the PET study. If you found the right study and you've read through the lit review and you've summarized it, you're going to see those names, Ellison, Music, and Henderson, and uh, they are going to uh, be cited by PETs. You're going to be able to answer how that study contributed to the one that PETs did. Then you're going to look for the hypothesis of PETs study. What uh, is Pets predicting? What are his hypotheses? And then you're going to answer whether those hypotheses were supported. That's where you're going to go back and figure out uh, the results and summarize the results and whether that matched up with what Pets was expecting to find. And then you'll turn that in on Blackboard. So this will be a little longer. You'll have your title page. You'll have uh, probably a page of, uh, of writing and then uh, your reference page. And on the reference page, you're going to include obviously two references this time because you'll be talking both about the PET study and the Ellison et al. study. Uh, so make sure you include both references. Uh, on that reference page, remember the rules for internal citations when you are citing through um, all of those when you're doing your summarizations and all of that. 
Uh, again, I will post that. Um, take your time with it. Uh, turn it in. Remember, I'm not assigning points to part one or part two um, or even part three. I'm looking for a progression uh, with you, and then I will assign a set of points to you uh, after it's all done. All you need to know right now is that nobody is failing this. Everybody after part one did a, a pretty good job. So correct what we talked about today. Uh, go back and, and look at your part one again. Correct what you need to correct uh, if you, if you want, so choose. Uh, and then make sure you pay attention to those details in part two. And then we'll talk again and next week when you turn in part three. Same thing. You're going to make sure that you have uh, paid attention to those details. Okay, uh, that's it for the APA uh, summarization and APA 1 um, discussion. Uh, I will be back on with some quick hits uh, in just a few.